Winter's Day. And guess what story the papers are full of this morning? Well, it's the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots, the, the class divide. The government's own report has concluded that Britain is divided by inequality in class from cradle to grave. Now, that's odd in a way, because if you ask people what is the big influence on closing that social divide, they'll say education. Education is the great leveller. And Tony Blair, when he came to power, he was asked what his uh, three priorities were. He said, education, education, education. And we have spent a fortune in the past dozen years on our schools. Which raises the question, why is there this gap between middle-class children and children from a poorer background? What's going on here? Well, the Education Secretary, Michael Gove, puts it rather bluntly. Listen to this. Before they even arrive at school, rich, thick kids do better than poor, clever children. And then when they arrive at school, the situation as they go through gets worse. And schools, you know, should really be engines of social mobility that overcome the disadvantages of birth. That's a pretty shocking indictment of our education system. But the evidence is there to prove it. The parent's income is an overwhelming factor in deciding a child's future success. So, in this film, I want to look at why there is this attainment gap between rich and poor children, and what on earth can be done to give the poorest a better chance in life. I don't suppose I have anything to complain about. My family was poor, but I went to a decent grammar school. You could do that in those days and left at 15 with a pretty modest handful of O-levels. But that was enough to get me a job on the local paper. And all I wanted to do was be a reporter. Try doing that today. Qualifications, that's what counts, a decent education. And if you're born poor, you are much less likely to get one. So, what can be done today to help children who, like me, happen to have been born to parents of modest means? This attainment gap is a problem that starts early, astonishingly early. By the time they are three, many children from deprived backgrounds are already a year behind children with richer parents. Here in Stoke-on-Trent, in the next few minutes, this mother will find out if Jack, her three-year-old son, is already delayed in his speech and language development. Okay. Are we ready? Put the keys in the box. Put the keys on the bed. Good listening, high five. Oh, excellent. Did Jack have a problem? No. No, Jack's doing very well for a three and a half year old. He has. So that's all. Um, all as it should have been. He's a healthy, normal, very chatty, um, good language skills. Stoke is one of the most deprived areas in the country. In 2004, when they tested the language development of all the three year olds in the city, they found nearly two thirds of them were a year behind the national average. A year is an awfully long time when you're three. Good boy. Hello. Good morning. Say hello. Hello. Say hello. Since then, the council has made an enormous investment in free nursery places and a campaign called Stoke Speaks Out, all in an attempt to narrow the gap. They've been making real progress, but this city is still well behind. How do you do? Yeah. Well, some of that is about what becomes the norm for the area as well. You know, a lot of the children in one of the first studies, we asked the parents you know, whether they were concerned, and they weren't because all the friends' children were at the same level. You're talking about poverty, yeah? There's definitely much more risk if you're from an area of poverty and deprivation, and you're going to be with people who've got similar issues to yourself. How long before there are no or a negligible number of, of children who are in the jargon, delayed. 
we always said this was a generational ambition, that it would take a generation to change um, aspirations and um, expectations of our children within the city. A generation? Yeah. It's almost unbelievable, that idea, isn't it? 64%, two-thirds of children can be as much as a year at the age of three behind the national average in uh, communicating skills. But we know what it means, because if you can't communicate, you can't learn. It really is that simple. And if you're that far behind of that age, well, that's a problem. Now, you might think that schools exist, at least in part, to try to close that gap. But as Michael Gove says, sadly, for hundreds of thousands of poor children, they don't. By 14, the gap is wider, nearly two years. And by 16, they're almost half as likely to get five good GCSEs as richer children. So, I've come back to Merseyside, where I got my first job with the BBC. This is Kirby. It was a pretty wretched area then, and it still has massive problems today. In this borough, four in every ten children live in homes with no earned income. This is the local authority that achieved the second worst GCSE results in 2009 out of all of England. What about your parents? Do, do they know? Can they advise you in things and how to get to yeah. university? Or? Well, so you do think I felt ashamed to me. Uh, uh, just go to college and uni and I then get a good job, but I didn't. To not a clue what I was going to do with. So other people that would have been... Assuming. These children have been singled out for a scheme called Aim Higher. The idea to get them to think about higher education. Whereas right, so when we were talking to people, they did say, like, what's Cambridge? Yeah. Like, so they've got no idea, like, that it's even a place in the country, let alone there's a university there. Yeah. These are bright children. Bright enough to know that the education they had been getting before AIM Hire spotted them had failed them. There's only two schools in Kirby now, and it's just everyone just rushes to get into one of them. So we've got everyone, and in some classes there's like 30, 35 of us all trying to learn one subject, and it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, what, what were your plans? What, what did you want to do when you left school? Probably go on as well. To be honest, to be perfectly honest, yeah. But now I want to go to college and university. And what do you want to do then? Be a lawyer. In Robin's case, the mentoring that she and these other children have been getting under the AIM Hire scheme does seem to be working. Her aspirations have been transformed. But a note of caution here. The chance of getting into one of Britain's best universities is around 25 times greater if you come from an independent school than if you're one of the poorest children in a state school. You're saying that the, those people in Eton and Harrow and places like that have got more, you know, um, opportunities to, to move through the system easier. But why? Why is that? They can pay for private tutors and they get spoon fed everything. Does that make you angry? Yeah, because... Like, if, if they can do it, why can't I? If, like, if their teachers can stay through the whole of their school, why can't our teachers stay in our school? Some questions. At the beginning of the film, he says Britain is divided from cradle to grave. What does this mean? What did Tony Blair say his priorities were? Michael Gove says its schools should really be engines of social mobility. What does this mean? What statistics does the presenter, John Humphreys, give to make his point? What is AIM Higher designed to do?